Vintage Electric Go-Kart Build Log Number 6 We have finally reached Milestone 1, and this video puts the final touches on how we got there. Now that our frame is painted a nice bright yellow, we can start assembly for the final time. Starting with the steering. Here we attach the Springer spindles, put the wheels on the spindles, and then make sure the tie rods are in place. There are a couple different placements of holes on the steering that you can use for the tie rods. Here I'm using the middle hole, but I ended up moving it to the bottom to add more clearance for my ankles. The steering wheel is pretty straightforward, just three bolts and nuts. Next up is the throttle and brake. These consist of a long shoulder screw, pedal, and cable. On this particular frame, I had to drill out the hole on the frame to make the shoulder screw fit a little better, otherwise it, the pedals were sticking it quite a bit. Both cables have adjustments, so you can set them up how you like them. I was originally going to use some hose clamps for the control panel, but it turned out to be easier to just use some zip ties, so let's do that instead. Continuing front to back, we're going to cinch up some cables a little bit and then put the seat in place. Now is a good time to do the seat because once we put on the back panel we can't get to the seat bolts. I picked up some rubber trim to put around the back aluminum panel. This is just to prevent you from cutting your hand on it and it looks pretty sharp as well. It's held on with some super glue. I picked up some spacers so that I can space the panel off of the frame a little bit. This gives some room for the nuts on the controller as they hit the frame a tiny bit if you don't use any spacing. You can also get to the nuts for the power supply and cable holders. I think it's looking pretty sharp with that rubber trim on the edge. Now we're going to mount the current shunt so that we can start figuring out the lengths of the cables we need. I soldered and connected up one end of a negative lead so that I can figure out how long it needs to be to the current shunt. Since the original battery cables were not cut to length very well, I decided to buy the parts just to build the cables myself. This allowed me to get more accurate length and clean up the look a lot better behind the battery. Building the cables turned out to be not that difficult. Just hold the battery lug in a vise, slip in one of the solder pellets, and then pull out your map gas torch and heat it up until the copper pellet melts. Then slowly slip in the cable and seal it up with some nice heat shrink tubing. Not bad. Okay, so do these cables fit any better? Awesome. I basically did the same procedure for all the other large current cable leads that were needed. Once all the cables were in place, I was able to cinch down the battery cradle to the frame. It was easier to screw down all of the large cables while the battery cable was not hooked up to the frame since the cables don't have that much flex in them. The terminal covers don't fit very well, but they will provide some protection. Continuing front to back in no particular order, we're going to put the motor plate on. This has been outlined in previous videos, and it's just held on with four bolts and nuts. Okay, on to the rear axle assembly. This turned out to be quite a pain because I decided not to remove the wheels or pulley before trying to reassemble. Eventually I got the bearing carriers bolted in and was able to move on to the brake. If you look closely, you can see that the brake caliper doesn't seat that well in the frame. This was a measurement mistake on our part when we were making the motor mount. Speaking of motor mount, let's get that motor mounted. Here we slip on the belt and then four bolts hold the motor to the motor plate. There is some adjustability in the motor mount so that we can tighten the belt by moving the motor up or down. I used a wrench to pry up the motor to put tension on the belt while tightening down the bolts. Now turning my attention over to the wiring. The previously created harness makes this a plug and play operation. Plug in each of the connectors to their respective ports on the harness, and then make sure we cinch everything up to the frame with zip ties. I'd like to create a box to 
keep all the cables in, but I'll save that for a later date. Last but not least, the battery. This is another plug and play operation. Just feed the balance wires through the cradle and plug them into the BMS. Strap it down to the cradle and then plug in the main battery cable. This can safely be done without a pre-charge resistor because that component is built into the DC contactor. And this wraps up what I'm going to call milestone one of the project finished. The cart is painted, all the electronics are in place, everything is working, I can charge the battery, uh, most of the switches are working, the display is working, and I'm pretty satisfied with the project. Milestone 2 won't be for a while, but some of the ideas I have for then are going to be relocating the battery to the front of the cart, headlights and taillights, mirrors, and probably some other little bits as well. As always, thank you for following along on this project, and I hope you've been enjoying it. That's all for today. Take care.